time, but I'm going on JetBlue. Well, that, I love that airline. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to another vlog. I'm Alexia Nicole, living my life by design, and I have a few guests here with me today. Introduce yourself. I'm Grimaldi, part of the 1017 class out of our 1017. My in-flight class <laughs> for our airline. So hello. Y'all know her. That's fun. Hey y'all. <laughs> All right, so what we decided to do, we just finished our recur, well, Grimaldi's about to do his, but he's yes. gonna pass, everything's gonna be good. Certified for another year. It's been kind of a year. We started training June 28th. Eight. We graduated July 28th, 25th. 25th, because of the July, holidays, yeah. yeah. And so today is July 9th. So we're in our one year period. So we just wanted to come to y'all with a video of a one-year update basically what we thought this career was gonna be like what we thought this airline was gonna be like and reality of things so I hope y'all enjoy let's get right into it. all right so first thing um, the glam life the glam life. <laughs> it is a very okay. glamorous lifestyle that you're gonna go and travel around the world and get amazing layovers while getting paid a lot lots of money right that's what we think that's that's the yeah that's, that's the expectation that's the, that's the expect, expectation okay. yeah that is the expectation that is set would you agree with that expectation if you're looking on instagram or just if you're on an aircraft and you're flying with a flight attendant and we probably look cute and you know red lipped up heels on suited and booted tie nice and tight um, that's probably the thought of, oh my gosh, I would love to do That's what I thought. Yes, definitely. That's what I signed up every, for. <laughs> every time I was going somewhere, I would literally just be like, oh my gosh, I just, I want to do what they do. I want to do what they right, do. And they so look bad. so pretty and it's like, ah, everything yeah. was perfect so this about is, it. This is your first airline too, It's right? my first airline too, yes. So, myself and Grimaldi, this is our first airline. Fawn had a few airlines under her belt, so maybe she didn't have the same mentality. But before your first first airline back in the day <laughs> clutch my pearls what was your thought was it the same thought mm, no because my mom was a flight attendant so i knew oh, so you come from a background okay of flight attendants. i knew when i was watching so what did you think though what was your reasoning for wanting to do this career um what do you call it the uh benefits no flexibility um not to have a routine to be oh, in different this. cities to work with different people right That's what yeah, I love the flexibility about it. of being all over the place and not have a set schedule corporate yeah. america if you will okay so the reality of those thoughts is i can't say it's it's not a hundred percent no i would say it's about like an 80 percent reality okay i would probably say 75 75 75 to 80. i mean you get like a santo domingo layover a Bermuda layover, mm -hmm. so that's and that's that accurate. is glamorous. That's on, nice. Yeah, right? up until I've you get called, <laughs> up until you get called at I 9 p.m. for a white plains 30 hour layover. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, with all the the nicer layovers, the white sand, the beaches, you have to consider those red eyes, red eye turns, where you're going from JFK to Phoenix and right back. You know. That's not that glamorous all the time. Um, it's not that bad either, but it's not that glamorous. I mean, if you, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not bad, but if, yeah. if you think that this is what I'm gonna do, you think that you're always gonna be in a beachy, nice, sunny layover, and then you get like a red eye after a red eye after red eye, mm -hmm. especially those transcon uh, red eyes, it's like, this is not what I sign up for, because you get home beat up, like tired, yeah, you're tired. gonna sleep for two days if you're lucky to sleep for two days because probably you get another red eye if you're still within your block. Exactly. So, but yeah, here and there you definitely get your nice San Juan layovers, Bermuda, yeah. Santo Domingo, whatever. Even even California for me, I loved California. Uh, yeah, I, love, I love my California love layovers. Coast, yeah. For sure. Okay. So I mean, besides that, you can make it. You can make it glamorous. You can. Y'all know me. I like to shop. So you can use it to 
your whatever you want to call it like let's say if I can't find something in this Zara, Zara I can just say oh well I'm going to LA tomorrow I'll just go to that Zara you know you have those type of benefits so I guess you consider that the glamorous life but you've also worked to get there yeah you know like I was gonna say and that's I think maybe a lot of people don't anticipate like this is this this business is very seniority oriented so mm -hmm. the reality is the reality is that you're gonna have to work up to getting all those yeah. beautiful layovers that so is, that yeah. is very true the Absolutely. expectation is you're gonna get the beach layover but the reality is that you're those not are far enough. and few yeah. in between unless you, you earn it got you literally the earn it. Yeah. yeah or if you're lucky if you're just like a very very junior reserve oh, and yeah. you're lucky that somebody called out or had an emergency yeah then that definitely is a trip that you're gonna work with two senior mamas mm -hmm. or papas and then it's you as a reserve but yeah. you get to enjoy it my first right. trip was uh, a three-day west coast trip and i had a 24-hour vegas layover san jose some of the the nicer places that a lot of people really want to go and i looked up and that was my first trip I was ecstatic. Y'all go back yeah, and watch that no. vlog. Mine was a uh, Santiago Red Eye. It was late four and a half <laughs> hours. So I was expected to return back to base like at 4 50 in the morning. I ended up landing at 9. Yeah. Leading half my mobile and passport. And I'm LOD. So. Yeah. Typical. We all look. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> we want to see whose plane it is. LOD, language and destination, bilingual, whatever you want to call it. So, okay. So let's talk about the expectations of a reserve flight attendant. So we talk about it. I think I've talked to, to death on this vlog about the fact that you're going to be broke. So I don't really think I have to go into that aspect of it. But I don't think enough people talk about the good parts of being on reserve. And there are a few good parts. Yes. The okay. flexibility of being on reserve. No, it, it is definitely flexible. Absolutely. No, I, it, I think. I, th I think it was really flexible. At yeah. least I made it flexible for what I wanted to do, how often I wanted to go home. Yeah, like I used to. And so, it depends on where you're based. Exactly. Yeah, because when I was on um, JFK, I was JFK based. I was a commuter. So what I did was that I stacked all of my days together. I mean, Jeff case is the reserve grid is green. That's how we call it. Basically, that means that we have enough availability of reserves. Uh, what I did was that I did like six day blocks and one day off. So I stack all of my days together That's and then exactly I have basically, I, I have more days off towards the end of the month. And then in the next month I did the opposite. So basically I can have three, four weeks yeah. depending on, on yeah, the month. Yeah. If you're strategic if about you're strategic it. If you're strategic about can, it, you can yeah. definitely have that flexibility of being yeah. basically like three, four weeks off. So yeah, yeah, I guess there are some pros. Yeah, there's some pros to it. I mean, and the, the word that you were looking for, what is it? It's leaving my or mind Or even if like you're too. a senior reserve, like senior reserves, like they, they get their preferential Pre bidding, yeah. their trips that they yeah. kind of want. So exactly. they can see what's available and still, so there's some perks to it. Yeah, there's it's not, perks. reserve isn't all bad. It isn't all just sitting here being broke. Like sometimes you get a call at three o'clock in the morning and you're going to, whatever lovely destination you're like oh my gosh i've never been here you right. know like with having a line it's nice but i feel like i feel like you put so much pressure on yourself yes because you you, you have really to bid for what you want and make sure that you want it otherwise your whole bid sheet will be completely messed up and yeah you will be upset exactly and you and now at this point you know how many hours you want to work right. how much money you want to make with reserve you don't really have that type of control so to me, it's kind of just a lot more relaxed being on reserve, kind of, sort of. It just all depends. You know. Yeah, I mean, because you, you can definitely decide not to fly. And, and while some people down it. Yeah. Yeah. Some people yeah. down it. They might be a line holder, but they might bid a reserve line because they can they can hold the trips they want on prep bids, or they can have weekends off on reserve, but they might not be able to hold weekends mm -hmm. off with a line. So, you yeah. know. So, I mean, reserve isn't all that horrible. Luckily here at our, well, Grimaldi has transferred. I transferred over. Bases. Yeah. So he's no longer JFK, he's Orlando based. So his reserve time is gonna be a little bit longer now. Uh, yes. How long are you gonna um, be on reserve? It is, right now it's two and a half to two, three years reserve. Well, I don't know what we signed for because ours is <laughs> yeah, looking that way too. Yeah. In so New York. right now, if Fawn and I were not um, meant, 
which shoot anyways that's a story for another day <laughs> that's another video uh, <laughs> that's a video for tomorrow right. that's right? it's coming be. soon surprise y'all might be going back to court Yay! anyways um our oh, class is still on reserve so they said it would be about a year and we're hitting a year and I don't think we're getting any closer Anytime to really soon. getting the line because no, no. we are done with having graduating classes come in for the summer um, so we probably won't see a new class until December and January and the only way you get off of reserve is to get more junior flight attendants under you basically so we had a nice little boost so our class is now senior reserves yeah pretty much well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are. That's so crazy. with being senior reserve, Fawn kind of touched on it earlier, but I did a video on pref bid, so y'all can go watch that. I can't explain everything, but you're able to pref bid for trips that are in open time, and that goes by seniority. So if you're on reserve, you can say, okay, I'm on reserve this day, this trip is available for this day, and then you bid for it. And then they award it to the most senior person that bid for it. So that's a benefit of being a senior reserve versus bottom of the barrel, better barrel, 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 junior. And I'm glad you that ain't got nothing. And I'm glad that you mentioned that because it is very important, guys, that when you are requesting to transfer bases, either because it's close to your home or is it just like the commute is easier, just do your research on the base. Because for an example, like if I were to be still on JFK base, I'll still be considered a senior reserve. You know, mm -hmm. the flexibility is so much open. But here in Orlando, I only have three people under me. So That's I'm basically crazy. the bottom three? of the barrel. Three. three. One, two, three. One, one, two, and three. And I know exactly <laughs> the names and they are from the class after us. So they're all 11, 17. Yeah. Um, so I basically yeah, have- Yeah, basically, no, basically started over. Exactly, I just started over from like since day one i have no flexibility That's worse than day one yeah yeah because in our class you at least have <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, se like yeah, I'm senior than you in my you class <laughs> so yeah i definitely have no saying um wow. I mean, i'm busier than i was in core in jfk because when i went to mint um for the little while that i was before getting the transfer you know i i had my trips and i got my line but here in Orlando, I have absolutely nothing. I mean, and I get used every single day, every single block, every single hour. So I have no saying. It's like having a line, but like a mandatory line with whatever nobody wants. So like not even I have, I mean, if, the only benefit that I have is if I want to bid on days off during the week, it's a guarantee because yeah. everybody will just call out on the weekends here in Orlando. But that's about it, yeah. yeah. Orlando is our second most senior base that we have here at the airline near and dear to my heart so and what it's how many flight attendants are here about it uh, we have in Orlando no we, in Orlando we have like yeah, 400 and something for a lot of it's not even 500 it's 400 and something because I'm, oh, that's I'm it? yeah it's it's very it's very small it's very senior but very small um, and also <laughs> thank you United um, keep in mind that we don't have a lot of trips. We do yeah, a lot of turns. turns. We do a lot of the island hopping, like the Bogota, the Lima, uh, the Santo Domingo, so the entire Dominican Republic, um, you name it. So, so yeah, we have a lot of turns, so that's why a lot of people like it, and it's, a, it's what they call a lifestyle base. Okay. You, you, you come to work, you report it's at 5 o'clock in the morning, you're home by 5 o'clock in the mm -hmm. afternoon. Um, so you basically have someone to take your kids to school and then you come and you can cook dinner and that's yeah. basically what you do And you know, it's you know, it's easy to say, you know, find out about your base It's it's kind of hard unless you unless you know somebody working for the airline to get these type of details about Each airlines base and how many people are there or whatever, whatever, whatever It's kind of hard to know what you can probably do is find out which base is most senior which one has the most productive trips and decide for your life like what you want to do yeah. but Grimaldi wanted to be at home yeah so for me it was all about being home benefit. yeah for me it was all about being home I definitely could not stand the crash pad leaving myself I mean I was known in my class to move in the first month like what like seven times from crash Did pad you? to crash pad <laughs> yeah so everybody was like if you want to know about that crash pad ask Grimaldi because he probably will have oh the details <laughs> uh, but yeah for me it was all about being home you know I'm two minutes away from the airport so even if I do a red eye and I get to the yeah. airport at four o'clock in the morning at 4 10 i'm already at home 
Yeah. So See? that's that's, yeah. that's See, definitely that's beneficial for me. So, as yeah. opposed to having to go to a crash pad exactly. and deal yeah. with that noise. And the cost and... savings, because I don't have to pay for oh, a crash yeah. pad. I don't have to Heck pay yeah. for prep, prep meals, because basically I just do turns. Yeah. So I know I can just so you... pack a bag of Oreos and that's it for that flight. That's yeah. That's, yeah. See, this, I'm moving. There's, <laughs> there's so many okay. ways to make mm. this career work for you. So if you want to constantly be on the go, you can do that. You can pick up these four four day trips. Some airlines have six, seven day trips, whatever the case may be. But if you want to be home every night, you can be home every night. Like it's it's you can do it. It just may take you a minute to get to that seniority level to be able to hold that. But right. you know, it's just something to kind of constantly look forward to. But then we touched on it. So let's talk about crash pads. Yes. What we thought crash pad living well. I ain't never lived in no crash pad. No, I didn't even went to a school dorm. <laughs> so in Puerto Rico, I, I'm from Puerto Rico. So in Puerto Rico, I was forced to drive to to college. My mm. dad wouldn't pay for an, an apartment or a school dorm. Yeah. So I didn't even have any idea what it's to live with strangers, basically. I knew what it was like, not strangers, because in college I lived with uh, one of my best friends. We went from high school, then we did oh, college. Good. and we lived together for three of the years and I moved out by myself, but so crash pad life was a shocker to you? It was definitely a shocker. Um, I was looking forward, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, because they prepare you, they, you get, once again, once you start this career in training, people exchange ideas and you get all of these Facebook groups and you can get information and share, share your questions or whatever. So I knew what I was going to, I didn't know the level of shenanigans oh. yeah. that go <laughs> yeah. into a crash It's bag. like Big Brother to the Exactly, it's like Big 12. Brother. Oh, yeah, because Vaughn said before me and Vaughn moved into our um, apartment room, whatever you want to call it, she was in the crash bag for two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah, really? because remember we went from training, it wasn't ready until like the first, so like the two weeks before then, I had to find somewhere to stay until we could move. That's oh. it. Oh. That's all it was So it's it's like it's like a mix of Big Brother with Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Um, but what's a positive thing about a crash pad? Uh, well, you you convenient. you meet people. I mean, it is convenient. The convenience. Yeah, yeah, definitely for absolutely. us. I um, mean, the airline that we work for, we have this shuttle that sometimes is reliable. Some others not, like Alexia have said in other videos. <laughs> uh, but the convenience of just having that shuttle, you know, you're just right there in the hustle and bustle of the action, yeah. um, close to the airport. It is very convenient. Um, also, a positive is that you get to meet great people. True. I mean, it, it's like instant friendship yeah it's like your family it's like an orphanage basically yeah, because like, y'all are you're basically living on top of somebody so bunk bed styles are, are what the general crash pad is like i guess you could say or bunk beds to a room whatever the case so another another positive another positive thing about crash pad is seniority believe it or not there's seniority inside a crash pad that really? means yes, girl. Well, like who gets what yes, bed? Like who gets what like bed that, and right? who gets which room? Oh my god! So as people move out and you're still there, you get seniority more senior. of like how long you've been in that in particular, that particular crash, crash pad, pad. Not exactly. for your airline, no, 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 but no, no, how long no. you've yeah. been living in, in that, that crash pad. pad. So there's oh. crash pad seniority. Let's just put it in that term. Crash oh. pad seniority. So you can just move from a top bunk to a bottom bunk from a more crowded room to just like a private room. Uh -huh. um, it depends, I mean, prices vary depending on the crash pad, that's very important to mention. Yeah. But yeah, in my specific crash pad, when I moved to the last one before moving into Orlando, um, I was with eight people, so, and then I moved with four people from our class. So it was like family, so that was positive. Okay, yeah. well, what else can we touch on? Um, I mean, it goes by so fast. It, a year it goes does. by so it fast. By. It flies by. It's like they were telling us today, the first three months you're just crying, saying, you know, I just want to quit. The follow three months you're like, well, if I survive the first three, I can probably do the six. Yeah. And then at the year mark, you're back in recurrence saying like, Yeah, looking, like, dang, yeah. I was like, literally, the instructors that were teaching, they were like, weren't you just here? And I'm like, yeah. literally, like, yeah, I was feels like I was just here yesterday. I'm telling you, I did not want to like check out of this room today. Yeah. Um, I didn't got to stay. 
because I'm local now. Oh, I'm Orlando yeah. based, so I cannot stay in the hotel because I basically live two minutes away. <laughs> but I get to reunite with yeah. lovely classmates. So it's like, you, how you been? You know, I've seen the you're all over the place. How's Orlando? Mm -hmm. How's New York? How's Boston? Whatever the case yeah. is. How's Long Beach? I guess one other thing we can touch on, right? <laughs> I wouldn't know. How's, how's Long how, Beach? How's Long Beach going to be? Right. Um, Oh my God. Just traveling. So outside of working, we're all just like, oh, I'm going to travel. Here. Most people get the job to travel, right? Yes. And not necessarily travel on your trips, on your pairings, or, you know, layovers, like traveling for vacation. I don't think I really traveled the first six months. Couldn't afford to. No. Like trying to figure out how I'm going to pay rent. Yeah, exactly. because I, I'm a grown ass woman. So I have bills, you know, outside of this you know before getting this job so and, and i with, was too busy changing crash pads <laughs> <laughs> with so. a little bit of pay that we were making within the first six months because we didn't get our first raise until we hit our six month period um you i'm not gonna say you can't travel because we have a, a lot of classmates yeah that they a lot went of them out they, they too. you know like that's they that's go. what they spend their money on you right. know they got the trees different lives, crash pads. Different priorities. they probably don't have yeah. no bills right they, you know, whatever the case may be. So, I mean, I'm traveling more now, but I'm still not like, just like on the whim, get right. up and go right. type of traveler. Like, I need to have things planned out and Me booked. Yeah. You know, some people just get up and say, oh, let's go here today. Right. So that is a possibility for you if you're that spontaneous. And if you have the stamina and you have your nerves under control for standby listing or the money to just buy a ticket if you get stuck in the middle of nowhere, you still have to report to base on time. Yeah. So if you have mm -hmm. the money and the stamina or the nerves or, or definitely you know every single person in the airline industry that can probably help you somehow, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So yeah, just learning how to actually travel, learning how to read other airlines listings and all of that stuff is just, I mean, I think we, yeah, it's complex and I think I kind of got it down now within the year, <laughs> but I still haven't flown every airline. So who knows? Yeah. I've, I've, know? I've, I've, I've traveled commuter on some airlines, but just state to state. Cause I definitely want to go through all 50 states yeah. um, just to get to know everything. Um, either. this is going to be now for my birthday, I'm going international. On my first um so yeah but I, I was gonna go to paris but then i decided not to so where are you going i'm going to mexico oh, to mexico yeah i'm going to mexico um mexico. So, mexico yeah so i mean and then commuting i know a lot of people ask about commuting and it's honestly it's hard to explain um you kind of have to learn whatever airline you're commuting on you you'll eventually learn their routes because airlines they kind of have the same routes, the same majority and, of the time. They switch it up here and there. And tricky airports. Like when I was planning my Paris, I was going to go on American out of North Carolina because mm -hmm. it's not as busy as JFK. So mm -hmm. the chances of you getting, getting on that on, flight, exactly. it's, it's higher. You know, if so you go to, out of Miami, JFK, you know, those large cities, it might be like a shorter flight or just more convenient for you. But if you do a little bit of a leg work, you might probably yeah. get less stress yeah if you will. so just yeah. kind of learning the airports learning the loads what's going to be heavy what's the best time of day for you to fly and things like that are definitely all things that i've learned within this first year and still like, learning like, still learning yeah definitely because you can't just it's hop so on a dynamic flight. this industry is so dynamic everything that we're saying right now could be obsolete in an hour so that, yeah. yeah that is very true so i mean it's been a good year so far made it this conversation will be different and we, yeah week. we've made it yeah. uh we definitely have some people that had that from our class that you know they decided to go on their ventures yeah so we've, um, we've lost three people yeah um we've had not one bad. not uh, bad no, it's not bad we graduate we started training with 75 five people failed out of training we graduated with 70 and now from what we think we know we still have 67 of yeah. us here one quit within the first month month yeah. it wasn't for him um, another girl switched to another airline that worked better for her closer to her home right come here hey wise. carly we miss you girl we miss you um and then another girl she was terminated for acting a fool <laughs> so you <Six> know <laughs> <laughs> like you know just 
take care of what you got to take care of. You know, be on top of your job. Priorities. Pri hello. That's if it right you there. spend a year of your life going through all of this stress and yeah. lifestyle changes mm -hmm. and getting your family in the same group just make it worth for something because yeah. even even if you decide to just go to another airline you're gonna start seniority zero yeah. so you we've bested a year of our lives building that seniority and we still don't have a line imagine it's just because aside from carly that she has valid reasons but if you just go or you just get terminated like it's for nothing like, you just basically wasted a year of your life yeah you know it's, you get sick every now and then that's okay like Trust me, airlines, they understand. That's why they have reserves. People are going to call out. Right. But you can't just... Like any job, though. That's any job. You can't just be like, oh, I'm going to call out today because you yeah. think that, you know, whatever the case may be. Sometimes oh, they got people to cover my shift. Yeah, or, sometimes the flexibility of the job gets mixed with the actual... Yeah, it um, makes you sick. Accountability, yeah. if we were yeah. going to use the word. Oh, um, so, in fact, I told you it was going to yeah. rain. So, yeah, that's probably the reason as to why people mix the two and it's very flexible. Even the point system for our airline, I think, is very great. Um, but yeah. don't get mixed the two because next thing you know, you're going to be in your lead's yeah. office having yeah, a nasty conversation. Know, I think that's the last thing I want to touch yeah. on is that we have so much freedom right. in this job that... I, I personally don't ever forget that I'm working, but it's very you, easy. It is very to easy get, uh, complacent. to get complacent very and easy. comfortable mm -hmm. because majority of the time you come to work, you get to the gate, you you check in with a gate agent that has no authority over you. No, you're accountable for yourself. Essentially. You're, exactly. Yeah. You don't answer to anyone. You don't. You, you know, it's not like you're going to work. You're clocking yeah. in. Well, we clock in. But, you know, you're not checking in with your manager and going over your duties for the day. Nobody's coming to you every hour and saying, okay, where are you at with this? Yeah. Like, you are literally responsible for yourself. So, it is easy to get in the mindset of, oh, I'm going to do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. But just make sure you are doing what you know you need to do to keep your job. Um, Still a job. Yeah. I mean, we see people here that a month to people that have been here, shoot. I mean, 40, we like, ain't we ain't been around 40 years but we've been here 18 years there's people that have been here since day one mm -hmm. and there's our instructor clayton that was just talking he started flying and what he say 78? 78 78 78 so you know it's one of those careers that you kind of get addicted to and if you know how to handle it and manage it well for yourself it can be great yeah definitely it is a, i mean i will never change it for the world i think it is a great decision i mean once you get the hang of it it's definitely worth it um the blood sweat and tears yeah. of the first few months uh -huh. um but it, it, once again it is completely worth it you make all great friends um they might change from base to base but once you reunite it's like yeah literally. time stop and it's like wow well, you know what's going on uh but once again you have to be accountable and you have to be very responsible because the very same amount of freedom that you are given is the very same amount of accountability that you're Absolutely. expected to exactly. that's a very good point that's great Ramali. so we're going to end it on that note because we have to get back to new york he has to go finish his my recurrent, recurrent. um thank you all for watching i hope y'all enjoyed this video until next time make sure you subscribe like